Kamazi Washington, it is a thrill to have you here with us at Cultural Attaché. And I want to ask you primarily in this conversation about the Hollywood Bowl Jazz Festival. That was previously known as the Playboy Jazz Festival. And it was a rite of passage for any jazz artist. If you could go back in time to when you took your father's, you know, soprano saxophone and played Sleeping Dancer Sleep On, and then talk to that version of yourself and say, you know what? I'm actually not just appearing at the Hollywood Bowl in the Jazz Festival. I'm co-programming it with Herbie Hancock. What do you think that young man would have to say to you? He would be shocked. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he would be shocked. He would he would pull out a whole stack of Herbie Hancock records that he had just been listening to. And he said, he'd probably say, this Herbie Hancock? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day about that, that is, you know, it's kind of a remarkable thing to be able to to kind of have a real relationship with, with your heroes. You know, it's kind of, it would it would be beyond with that, with my, with my, you know, that would be my, you know, 11, 12 year old self. It would be beyond what anything he really dreamed of, you know, you know, I mean, to, to, to you know, those, people like Herbie Hancock were like, um, they're almost like mythical <laughs> figures to, to, to us and you know it, it's it's such a huge honor and it's such a huge blessing to be able to to kind of to be able to connect with him you know both, both musically and just personally you know I mean, he's such a wise and and hyper intelligent person you know and he just he just his vision and his and his ability to, to kind of um see the world is 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 just as, as unique as his you know ability to play, play the piano you know um and i would assume that 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 vision to see the world and his ability to play the piano are inextricably linked you can't i don't think one can exist without the other yeah exactly exactly i mean he plays he plays music in a way that feels like someone who understands you know understands the connection of all things you know Right. Um, another hero that you got to meet and spend time with was Wayne Shorter, who we, whom we recently lost. Um, and you wrote a really beautiful tribute to him on your Instagram um, post after his passing. Is there a particular memory of being in and around Wayne Shorter's universe that stands out to you? Oh, man. I mean, that's, that's another person. I mean, Wayne Shorter, I mean, he was really, really I was like my guy, you know, when, when I first started playing music and, and, and still now. <laughs> so it's like someone that's been at this very pivotal place in my, in my, in my, in my psyche for, for my whole life almost. Um, and um, I mean, I mean, yeah, the first time I met him, it, it was, it was, it was very surreal. You know, we were playing in a, in a group called the Mode School Jazz Band. And, um, you know, the director told us that he was coming and it was like, you know, you just don't, you hear it, but you don't necessarily believe it. And there he was sitting right next to me, you know, in the saxophone section, and we we're playing this show. And, you know, I never forget, I mean, I, um, I can only work, I was trying to think, I got to say something to him. Is Wayne Shorter sitting there, I have to say something to him. And all I could think to say was, I was like, uh, I remember, I said, uh, you and Lee Morgan must have been real good friends. I could tell by the way you guys play together. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of laughed. It was like, yeah, 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 we were friends, you know. And then, um, you know, my friend Ronald Brunner Jr., he 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 walked over and he um he said, Hey, we're playing at Catalina's Bar and Grill on Friday. You should come see us. And uh and he showed up. You know, we had a band called the Young Jazz Giants, and it was me, Ronald Brunner Jr., Thundercat, Cameron Graves, and uh yeah, when he sort of showed up, he had a booth. Like had a bunch of us, you know, family and friends with him, and we were just in awe because it was like this is someone who was larger than life for us, you know, you know, it was like, um, you know, and, and he was just there, and he spoke to us, and he gave us advice about music and stuff like that after we played, and so it was like from there, it was like, um, you know, it it, it does something to your psyche when when you can, can connect to someone who feels like they're bigger than life itself, you know, it kind of makes life. It puts life in a different perspective for you as a young as a young person. I would also say that it'd probably have to give you a really quick lesson in how to tamp down your nerves if you see Wayne Shorter walk in. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I tapped him down though. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, in in 2019, I had the privilege of speaking to Herbie Hancock because he was curating a, a show at the Bowl called The Next Generation in Jazz. And at the time I spoke to him, he was in Denver on tour with you. Um, and I asked I asked him about you know what's going on in jazz now. What is he looking for? And he said there are so many things that are happening. Changes happening exponentially. What do you see as the biggest changes pr- that have taken place just in the last four years since Herbie did the this this next generation of jazz and where we are today as the two of you are programming the Hollywood Bowl Jazz Festival? Mm, you mean like changes in the music itself, or changes in, in, the- in the music and the artists and how they're performing it, the way they're expressing themselves? Yeah, I mean, well. You know, the biggest change I see, which is, I think it's a good change, but it's, it's, it can be a scary one as well, is that jazz seems to be more so than it has in, in, a, in a, a number of years. It seems to be kind of reintegrating into the larger musical conversation. You know, it's it's no longer, for a long time, jazz was kind of isolated. Like we had our own little jazz festivals we had our own little clubs and, you know, if you want to go hear jazz music, you had to go to one of our jazz functions that were just jazz, you know, for the most part. And then what kind of started happening is, is you started getting other styles of music kind of, the next phase was you started to see other styles of music kind of coming into our spaces. You started having jazz festivals and you hear R&B groups and, you know, other types of music kind of happening at still our jazz festival but still if you want to hear jazz you got to hear you got to go to one of our functions what's starting to happen now is jazz is now starting to infuse into non-jazz arenas you know so you see, you know and not just myself you see people like Shabaka, robert glasper chairs martin thundercat all these other plate people um you know um um yusef days um you know, a, a lot of other musicians who are taking jazz and bringing it into other arenas. And I think that's a beautiful thing. You know, I think that that's good for the music. I think it it, it it's not only good for the listeners who get to hear it and maybe like in a, in a space that they wouldn't have, maybe someone who never would have thought to even go to a jazz festival now gets to hear jazz at, you know, their, you know, whatever, their, their, their music festival, um, along with all the other styles of music that they hear. And it's good for the music in that, you know, it's this 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 is a camaraderie that happens when you're around other musicians, and you know, and and that thing I think it's going to broaden the music because it, it'll it'll take away some of the fear, some of the isolationism, like the that this needs to be separate. This is you know, what I mean, keep that other stuff away from me. Some of that those thoughts I don't think they're good for the music or, or the listeners, you know, for the musicians or the listeners, you know. Yeah, there was a time when jazz was a four-letter word that you would never hear mentioned at Coachella. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, how would you compare the collaboration that you have with Herbie Hancock in in putting together this year's jazz festival to the musical collaboration you have with him on stage? Um, <clears throat> you know, music happens in a moment, you know, and so that's a, it's, it's, you tap it into a different psyche when, when you're in the moment making music, you know that's that's you know there's so many other things and you know and 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 this cur- curation you're tapping more into your your um your knowledge your your rolodex <laughs> your <laughs> you know your your awareness of what's kind of happening in the world of music and so it was it was great but it was a great time because it was you know basically you know there were just ideas as to like what what the the Hollywood Bowl was kind of looking, the Hollywood Bowl Jazz Festival people were looking to have there. And then, you know, what ideas Herbie and I both had as to how we could best kind of fulfill those those ideas. And so, you know, it was, it was a great conversation. And, you know, you get to learn other little things about people, like what they're listening to, what they're reading or what they're into, what, you know, what's kind of on their, in, in, in their in their horizon, in their vision, you know? But as you're trying to capture, you're, as you're as you're being in the moment in a performance, you're also trying to capture a moment in time because the 2023 Jazz Festival is going to ultimately be, you know, a yardstick by which we measure what this year in music, in jazz music was like, isn't it? 
Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's just yeah, it's like it's like you know, in the in the moment of making music, though, th there's uh, it, it's it's similar in that you know, it just happens in the instant, and there's um, there's less ability to kind of evaluate and go. Well, here's the three options of notes I want to play. <laughs> if I play the B flat, this will happen. If I play the C, you know what I mean? It's more like it's a more of a it's more intuitive, I would say. And of course. And, of course. and the only way to look back on it is is by looking at somebody's you know video that they took with their cell phone while you were performing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw a video that you did for Amoeba's What's in My Bag series seven years ago. And you were talking about participating in Grammy Camp. And how you were so impressed with with the young musicians who were there, you know, who you know, you said you have to you have to you know watch out because they're coming up so fast. I don't think fifteen years ago we would think that that young musicians would take this kind of interest in this type of music. What do you think's changed? Well, I mean, the world we live in a different world. They they grew up in a different world than the world I I, I grew up in. And there's some young musicians that are so amazing. You know, I hear them and I'm just like floored, you know. Um, and, you know, they have different, you know, there, there are things that we had that they don't necessarily have as much anymore. And there are things that they have now that we didn't ever, ever dream about having. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's it's a um, it's an interesting thing. Um, you know, I think that artistry and music, that they're, they're, they're such human traits that they'll always be here. And they're always going to be people who attach to those things. And jazz is such a, a open and, and, and it's in its purest, in, in my opinion, best form. It's such an open and, and, and freeing art form that those people who are searching for artistry and music some of them are going to find it no matter what, you know what I mean? Like, even if it gets isolated, which that's what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's beautiful that it's less isolated now. And I think in the future generation is going to see even more kids kind of gravitating towards jazz and gravitating towards, you know, the kind of the freedom and the expressiveness that it, it kind of lends itself to. Um, and in that it's going to expand and, you know, I've always been a a, a a person who believes that the definition of a word, you know, is supposed to serve, the definition of, of the word jazz is supposed to serve the music, not control it. And so it is going to change. And these, these kids are going to bring stuff to the music that I just didn't have to bring. And so it's going to be different than what I brought to it because they have new things. They have a new, a new reality to add and 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 if we want them to play the music then we have to accept you know who they are and they're going to bring who they are and what they've been through and what their thoughts and their experiences are and that's going to be something different to the music than it's ever been and, and that's the beauty of it you know and so um you know i think that um you know i've, I've always felt that the music will find it, it, it's it's the music will find its service <laughs> you know what i mean Right. And and you it'll find the people that want to that 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 hold it sacred, and that love it, and that will want it to grow to new and higher places. And it has. I, I see them now already. Right. Well, I mean, I'm wondering if if a label like jazz, you know, as a descriptive term for a genre of music, is even appropriate anymore. I mean, you performed with Metallica. Vijay Iyer had a classical, quote unquote, classical work at Walt Disney Concert Hall. Um, Terrence Blanchard has his second opera going on at, at, at the Met in New York. Do you think that that labels or genres are becoming passe and something that we're going to we're, we're starting to enter into a a post genre, post label environment or creative world? I mean, in a certain sense, because, you know, I'm, I'm also, you know, I love reading I'm, I'm a bit of a history buff so I, I read old articles and interviews of, of jazz musicians going as far back as even like someone like Louis Armstrong and so in a certain sense like I said the, the, in the sense of of, of of the definition of, of, of the genre or the definition of the word jazz having any type of control over what the musicians play themselves that's always been kind of uh, 
no good. Like the music, we've never musicians have never liked that, you know. But the functionality of a genre to me is is just an organizational tool. It's so that like, hey, if you if you're scrolling through the infinite world of iTunes and you want to try to find some music that is similar to to Wayne Shorter, well, that's where the word comes in handy. It's like okay. But I think when, when you put too much weight on it and when you make it something like, oh, this should dictate what the musicians are playing. Jazz is this. And if you play jazz, you should play this. That's where it's 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 inappropriate and always has been inappropriate. But that's as an, organ an organizational tool to help you help listeners find the music that they're looking for. It's fine. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Now you are playing the first night of the Hollywood Bowl Jazz Festival. But anybody who knows your history knows that you were also a member of West Coast Get Down, which is playing the second night. So sh should we anticipate that we will see you both nights on the stage at the Hollywood Bowl? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there with my brothers for sure. You know, um, when we were talking about, you know, things we could do, you know, I just mentioned that, you know, I, you know, I was part of this, this really amazing collective of musicians and we grew up together, we're all from Los Angeles. And, you know, we've had a, an amazing journey in our lives and, and and basically the plan is you know for this west coast get down shows is to us to share you know with our hometown you know our experience i'm going to bring up some some artists that are that have been integral to us and that have you know helped us along our way and and it's going to be a huge honor because a lot of these people you know we grew up we, we played with them when we were younger we haven't had have, have a chance to play with them in many years you know and so it's it's going to be really amazing to be able to do that yeah, now you brought up Ronald Bruner Jr. Um, earlier in this conversation, and he said that being in this band is a gig forever. And he went on to say that I could be 90 and Kamazi will still call me. What makes West Coast Get Down a forever gig for you? Well, it started from the beginning. I mean, I, I, Ronald and I, our friendship and our musical relationship started when we were three years old. Um, you know, and, and, and we've... Um, we've shaped ourselves, you know what I mean? I mean, like we've, we've all had great teachers and mentors, but we're probably all are most heavily, are most heavily influenced by each other, you know? So, you know, whenever one of us would get into something, we all would get into it, you know what I mean? So like when, when Ronald, you know, you know, really got into, you know, uh, Billy Cobham and, and, and that Billy Cobham and George Duke live in Europe, that we all were really into that record, you know, because <laughs> every time we find a gym, it would, it would circulate among us. And, and, and everyone was, you know, I remember like when Stephen, you know, first gave me that, that Stanley Clark self-titled record where he's holding the bass like this, you know, and um, I, it blew me away, you know, and, and we had to learn all those songs because when we played gigs, we already knew Stephen was going, you know, Thundercat was going to want to play those songs. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, in that, you know, in a very organic way, you know, we didn't really think of, it was just our friends who grew up in our neighborhood and we all just happened to love music and, 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 and it, and it kind of stuck to us for our whole lives. We just grew and we would, you know, and then later on, as we got older, we started pulling each other on, on different gigs, you know what I mean? Pulling each other onto the Raphael Speed gig, on the Shaka Khan gig, on the Stanley Clark gig, or George Duke, or Ger Gerald Wilson, you know, um, you know, you know, and then people like Ronald went off to play with people like Kenny Garrett and other people, other so many of our heroes we got a chance to kind of interface with and play music with. And so, yeah, I mean, because our friendship is kind of is more on a life level. And I always say life is bigger than music. Music is a is a is a is a um, propeller to life, but life is the real thing. And so, you know, we're we're friends in life. You know, like someone like like Brandon Coleman. I was friends with him for, I don't know, like you know, maybe, maybe, you know, 10 years before he even started playing music, you know, it was, um, yeah. So we, you know, our friendship is, is, I think what Ron was trying to say in that is that because our, because our friendship is forever and, and music is going to be forever in, in, in us, then, then by nature, our music, our musical relationship will be forever. Right. And for those who want to know, some of the artists that you just mentioned in that answer will be appearing at the at the Hollywood Bowl Jazz Festival, um, in addition to West Coast Get Down. Um, and by the time this this you know interview is posted, 
Belle Bib DeVoe will already have been announced as, as a headliner for the show. Um, are there other artists who will be added? You know, is there is there more to come than than we've heard of? Yeah, well, we're still in the works, so yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. But we know the future will tell, but we are in the works. Yeah, yeah. So probably yes. Yeah. Well, who are the artists you're most excited to see and hear play at at this festival? Um, I'm. Uh, I mean, I mean, pretty much all of them. You know, what I mean, I can't even say. I can't. I mean, like. When I, when I, you know, because we, we made our suggestions and then, you know, the, the process is kind of like then the the business negotiation and da, 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 that stuff kind of takes up. And that wasn't really, I, went, I wasn't really privy to that part. You know what I mean? We kind of made the creative requests and then we kind of started to get back the feedback like, oh, this person can do it, that person, you know, da, 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 da. And so when I got the, the list that we, we kind of have right now, I was, I was like, wow, this is going to be, this is going to be amazing, you know? Um, you know, from the Lachma band to the, you know, the, the to the 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 uh, Herbie Hancock Institute band, you know, to you know Leonel Aweke and and you know, you know, all, all those bands. I'm I'm excited for everyone. I, I can't really think of anyone that I'm not excited about. So, yeah, I've never see, seen Big Freedia perform live, so I assume that 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 will be a a major part of the show because that's that is a one of a kind talent. Oh yeah, 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 I mean, yes, and it's. Yeah, it's gonna be back to back though. <laughs> you I know, know that. I mean? it always it's is. Gonna be, it's gonna be yeah. amazing. It's gonna be an amazing um, time, and it's you know, and it's gonna each artist is gonna inspire the artist that's coming after them as well. So it's gonna be, you know, I think it's gonna just keep rising up, and so I think both both days are gonna be really special. Right now, Dinner Party released a new single in early March, um, "Insane." And you've released a few singles since becoming in, in 2020. And I know that you're about to embark on a fairly substantial tour, U.S. tour before the, the Jazz Festival. Does that mean you're working on, out some new music that, that might finally be recorded? Because those of us who are big fans of yours want to know when we're going to get more. Oh, yeah, I'm almost finished my album. I got one song that, I'm, that I, I, I have to figure out exactly what I want to do with it. That I feel like I want to put on this record. So just this is one more song to record <laughs> and then the album is done. So pretty soon there'll be some music, you know, coming down the pipeline. You, you, you think we're looking at this year? You know, with everything that's going on in the world, you know, uh, lead times and all those things, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to put too much pressure on the record label. <laughs> so like, yeah, it's <laughs> happening this year. You know, um, if I can finish this one last song, it's just, and it's been, it's one of those songs that I know is beautiful, but I'm just having a hard time figuring out exactly what it should be in a, in a and that's a weird way of saying things but you know it's like it's like a it's like figuring out where uh, having a beautiful flower that you know you want in your garden but you just can't really figure out exactly where it should be planted you know yeah or you don't um, want to you don't want to cut it until it's reached its full maturity yeah 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 and, that, and you know and that's that's kind of a big part of like orchestrating and deciding you know the vocals or not or you know all those types of things am i going to add words and things like that that i'm it's just one more song that I, I know i want to be on the record and i, I just have to figure out and then yeah then so so i'm close <laughs> well good well maybe you should take some take some of your some advice that that you know that you expressed to mark Marin in 2016 because you said the trick is letting go bird and those other guys they ran right to the edge of the cliff with train, you got to run and jump off and just be okay falling down this cliff, this cliff, and have the confidence that somehow I'm going to have to land on my feet. How does that perspective of trains work influence the decisions you make as an artist, as a musician, and and even as a man? Oh yeah, yeah. Fearlessness is a is a very important. Um, it's a very important ingredient to making music you know because it's it can be kind of scary because you're you're kind of revealing the most um you it's like you're, you're revealing your heart it's like you're cracking open your chest and just open your heart up and you know you can imagine like you know it's 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 scary um but the greatest music it needs to be fearless because it has to be able to the music ultimately you have to have faith in the music and, and that it will lead you to where it it should be you know and um you know um definitely like 
you know, listening to someone like John Coltrane and, and, and hearing how far he would go, you know, it's like, it's almost like, you know, another Nazi would be like, you know, he's like a, you know, like a cliff diver who has a parachute, but just, he just never opens the parachute. He just, you know what I mean? He just keeps on flying, you know? And, uh, and, and, and that he discovered that he could fly forever, you know? And, and that's a, that's a huge lesson. And, you know, I mean, for me, you know, everyone, every musician has a different, a different, uh, method and have that, have their own, um, you know, um, way of kind of getting to the music that they have in their hearts. So I've always been a bit meticulous before we go in, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's always been a struggle for me to kind of like, to push the button to go. <laughs> now, once we, once I go, I'm very, it's weird because it's a weird thing because once we once we go, I'm super. It's super easy for me to let go, and let the music be what it is. But for some reason, in my own head, and maybe I, maybe I'm undoing this right now as I'm speaking to you. Before we say go, I feel a need to like measure all the. <laughs> okay, everything is the wings or everything is good. Okay, now let's push this plane off the cliff and <laughs> see how it flies. You know. Well, maybe that's maybe that's the 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 composer equivalent of measure twice, cut once. Oh yeah, yeah. Or measure, 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 measure ten times. For me. <laughs> <laughs> well, given that you have a new album that will come out to be determined, um, I think it's a good time to end our interview by asking you about something that Max Roach, who I believe had to have been a big influence on you, um, something that he said. He said, "Music mirrors where we where we should go, have gone, and can go." Music is an abstraction. Looking forward to your next album or into the future, what strikes you at this moment in time as the most important thing you'd like your music to mirror? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think at this point in time, for me, more so probably than ever in my musical life, what you just talked about before, the fearlessness, you know, um, this next record that I'm doing, you know, it came during a time of me having a lot of personal reflection. It came at a time, you know, I recently became a father. And so it came at a very kind of swirling transitional period of my life. And, you know, normally my, my thoughts and my music are kind of aimed at the infinite. And this record is much more based in my reality more so than my imagination you know but I'm a super spacey kind of guy so it still has that element in it but I guess it's more grounded than I've ever made before and so there's a there's a sense of like you know when you're when you're speaking um a bit more directly you know there's for me there's a there's a want to make sure that I am conveying the thoughts that I actually have so let me let me think them 10 times, every measure them 10 times and make sure that they are actually, you know, and that's just a, you know, so for me, I mean, in this record, um, having the courage to just be able to let it be what it is, you know, despite whatever anyone may think, you know, and, um, you know, and that, that is a, um, you know, I've always kind of had that, but like I said, normally my music is kind of aimed at the, at the, <laughs> it's aimed somewhere in the you know in the andromeda galaxy or something and then so like whatever i mean i don't know so you know but this one is kind of more aimed at you know things like you know like my, my daughter actually wrote one of the songs on the album you know what i mean so like a song is for her and that's more that's a bit really close personal for me you know what i mean musically maybe a little bit more than, than normal you know well children have a, a an amazing way of grounding us don't they yeah absolutely yeah. Well, congratulations on being a father. I very much look forward to the Hollywood Bowl Jazz Festival and to the new album whenever it may find its way into our ears and our psyches and our hearts. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much.